So we back with another video on the NBA channel. And today, we're gonna be finally reacting to somebody's top 10 NBA list. We used to do this all the time, and we back. I've been giving y'all my tier list. I'm gonna give y'all who I think should make the all-star for like the starters and for the bench. I'm gonna give y'all tier list for the positions coming real soon. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wait to the playoffs. We're gonna do another one for the playoffs, but we're gonna do one for the mid-season as well. So yeah, if you guys want all those videos, like the video. Hopefully y'all boys been enjoying the videos lately. I've been trying to go crazy for y'all boys. But yeah, today we got y'all boys with the top 10 best NBA players in the world. Hopefully he don't, he don't, he don't piss me off. But yeah, let's hop into it. So as the NBA season has a single person watching this video right now will have a different opinion. But this is just my list and my criteria and you will see a common trend in these rankings and of course there will be some outliers. Now as always if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel crazy and if block. you stick around to the end make sure to leave a like and as always let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the rankings. Now at number 10, we've got Anthony Davis. Now Anthony Davis, of course, started- I just feel a whole lot of copyright come into this video. When AD was playing, bro, AD was definitely easily a top five player in the league. Easily. Like, easily he was playing like a top five. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. If I do my top 10 players, it's gonna really like blow a lot of people because the number one person that I was saying consensus he ain't really been that crazy offensively this year. Now, defensively, everything else, he's been straight. But, like, offensively, he can't shoot outside the paint this year. That's a big That's a big no-no. It's a big no-no. I think Anthony Davis, you definitely got an argument for top three for Anthony Davis when he was healthy. But the thing is, I can understand him being this low because he's never healthy. <laughs> it's just a fact. Like, it's sad, to be honest, but it's a fact. But the season out very slow. His mid-range wasn't falling and his confidence on offense was deteriorating. But of course, as of late, Anthony Davis has been playing like a top five caliber player. Yep. And it's safe to say that he has revived his season. On the season, he's averaging 27 points a game, which is good for 11th in the league. And he's averaging 12 rebounds a game, which is second in the league. And he's also- The biggest thing with Anthony Davis, not the offense. If you was watching the Lakers when he was playing, they were a top defense in the league when he plays like he literally like was like making their defense he was turning their defense into from a bad defense to a top defense like not a top 10 15 top 5 type defense in the league he was really that dominant on the defensive end so honestly Anthony Davis in my opinion definitely was a top 5 caliber player when he was healthy but he just can't stay healthy so I can't really argue it so fifth in blocks and he's also eighth in field goals made so it's pretty obvious that Anthony Davis has been affecting the game on both sides of the floor. He's easily been one of the top defensive players in the league and has also been a top 10 caliber scorer in the league. Now obviously a lot of people will bring up the winning argument in this and the fact that the Lakers are 13th in the Western Conference right now. But if you watch the Lakers games you will realize that Anthony Davis has to do a lot. I mean, just the defensive side alone, Anthony Davis has to make up for a lot of the Lakers' mistakes. The Lakers' perimeter defense is terrible. I mean, just for example, Darvin Ham will throw out a lineup of Lonnie it's Walker, Austin Reeves, Patrick Beverly, and LeBron James. Or he'll take out LeBron James and throw in Russell Westbrook. And now you've got multiple average to below average defenders on the court at the same time. And if you know basketball, then you know one player cannot mask up everyone else's mistakes. It's simply just not possible. The Jazz tried to do that with Rudy Gobert, but it didn't work. You just can't have a defense that is heavily reliant on one player. And the fact that the Lakers cannot shoot the ball consistently is a huge problem as well. So there's multiple reasons why the Lakers- One thing I gotta give Joel and B credit for, Joel and B has kind of fought off that injury prone stigma. I'm gonna be honest, because he's been pretty healthy the past three seasons. I give him his credit. He does get injured, but he doesn't get injured to the near extent that Anthony Davis. They was kind of paired together where Anthony Davis was definitely a better player at the time, but now Joel Embiid has kind of taken over that better player, and he's been 
more healthy. So yeah, I can't even lie. I gotta get Jolene Reed credit. I just want that's one thing I just thought about watching Anthony Davis. Have been so bad, and why they're the 13th seed right now. But it is for sure not Anthony Davis's fault. And I believe that if you put the right pieces around Anthony Davis, like some of the other players that I'm about to name on this list, then his team would be winning a lot more. So that's why I have Anthony Davis at number 10. At number nine, we've got John ja Morant. Oh John ja Morant has consistently been one of the best playing guys. Oh in the my season. god! He's averaging 27 points a game, which is 15th in the league. He's averaging eight assists, which is I'm gonna be honest, this shit is so cap. This shit is so cap. This nigga's not wait, wait, wait. Let me make sure I'm not tripping. This is not nine, right? Yeah, see, nah, that shit's cap. Nah, this nigga's not better than Anthony Davis. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, this nigga's not better than Anthony Davis. He's not. He's not. I don't even know if Josh's top 10. There's a lot of players that might deserve to be top 10. But he might. He got an argument for top 10. He's not better than Anthony Davis, though. That's all I know. That's, I ain't gonna lie. That's all I know. Health or not, I don't give a damn. He's not better. I'm sorry. That's a fact. He top three point guards. Actually, no, I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I'm. I don't even know if I'm saying Jaws top three point guards because Shea is really fighting for that spot. But he's definitely in the convo for top three. I think Luca and Steph definitely got the top two. But yeah, I, I just don't. I'm, I just know Memphis he's not better Grizzlies than Anthony the third Davis. You can argue the Western Conference Shea right and Jaws. Right ja ja and the Grizzlies have been but, extremely consistent this season yeah. and were even first in the West at one point. So I think that Ja's individual success and his team success is definitely what puts him at this spot for me. And that's why but I he has have a really good team. Nine. It's not now like at number eight, we've got Donovan Mitchell. And Donovan Mitchell this season has been making a case for I think this is before he dropped 71. So I can't even be mad at Don I'm not putting Donovan Mitchell over uh, Anthony Davis. I'm not. But I can't even really be mad at Donovan Mitchell being top ten. When I see Donovan Mitchell top ten, that kind of you know what I'm saying, that kind of makes me a little make like it make me like it kind of just throws me off a little bit. I can't lie. But I can't. He been hooping this year, so I can't even really argue it. I think he averaging like 30 points per game on really, really crazy, like Curry-type efficiency. So I can't really argue it. You know what I'm saying? I really can't argue it. Especially if you think about the fact that he is six foot one. I can't really argue it. Like, I'm going to be honest. There's a lot of stuff with Donovan Mitchell I like. You can't really guard him double team. You can't. You can't. The pull-up is crazy right now. Pull-up is crazy. Like, the athleticism, like crazy. Now, defensively, he's 6'1", but come on. Being the best shooting guard in the league, he's averaging 28 points a game, which is ninth in the league. And the Cavaliers and this are fourth in the Eastern 71. Conference right now and have been near the top of the conference for most of the season. He just had 46 on the Mitchell's Jazz defense at the time has he's improved, this. As I predicted as well. And Donovan Mitchell has also lost, been consistent but... all season. So that's why I have him at number eight. One thing I say about Donovan Mitchell, it, to me, from when I watch Donovan Mitchell and what I've seen, he doesn't seem to play to the same level when Darius Garland is in the game. Now, you may say that's because he has another player on the court that can get 20 and 10, but I see that as he kind of needs the ball more to get the most out of him, I feel like. I feel like he doesn't really need another, like, main. Like, he doesn't really need to play off the ball as much as they kind of are going to have him play when Darius Garland plays. So they're going to have to probably figure that one out because I do think they are a better team with Donovan Mitchell being like the main ball handler instead of Darius Garland, even though Darius Garland is really good. But I think Donovan Mitchell just has been that good this year. But Donovan Mitchell kind of reminds me kind of how DeMar DeRozan was last year. Steph at seven is kind of crazy. Steph is having a crazy year, too. I, I guess team success. But Steph is having a crazy season this year. So I don't know, man. I don't know. Steph is definitely, he's, he's the, probably the only person I would probably have over AD right now, though. He's probably the only person that I probably have over 80 that we've shown so far. So I'm not mad at Donovan Mitchell being top 10 or Ja, but yeah. And at number seven, I've got Stephen Curry. Steph at the beginning of the season was on pace to have another yeah. 50, 40, 90 season. And even though he's injured right now, he's still sixth in the league in scoring at 30 points a game. He's still first in the league in three pointers made at 11.6. And also game. leads the league in three point percentage at 43.4%. And the same. He leads the league in three point percentage and makes the most threes. That <laughs> nigga Curry is crazy. I, 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 I can say the same thing about he Stephen Curry. Is. The Warriors started 
started the season now at the bottom is, of the Western man. Conference, and now when they're he the does ninth on seed. Every given Steph night is before crazy. he got hurt was doing everything for the Warriors. He was leading them in points. He just came he was back second last in night, rebounds by the way. as a guard, they first lost, in assists, first back. in threes made, and third in steals. And Steph had virtually no help, and the Warriors also couldn't play any defense. So I don't really think that it's Steph's fault that the Warriors have been this low this season. He's been playing. I think the Warriors until they start giving Kaminga consistent minutes. Because Clay, the way they play, used to play, Clay used to be like the defender. And Curry was like the, the all, full all offensive player where Clay could still play really good offense. So the fact that Clay doesn't play any defense anymore, they play Jordan Poole a lot of minutes. Like they're really trying to rely on Looney, Wiggins, DiVincenzo when Curry got hurt, and Draymond a lot. Now, I feel like a real reason why they started winning a little bit more games and they kind of got up in ranking when Curry got out because now they have a person that they, that plays a large amount of minutes that's not really the craziest defender. He's been he's been better defensively, but people kind of overrated a little bit. I think he had been putting in effort on defense on a crazy higher level since like probably 2017, 2018. But Honestly, bro, the fact that they can now play more people, more minutes that are kind of more defensive type players like DiVincenzo, like Kaminga, they kind of becoming a better team. But it's going to be interesting to see what they do with these guys, minutes that was kind of playing defense like DiVincenzo, like Kaminga. I think Kaminga definitely should start getting more minutes. Moody should definitely start getting more minutes. DiVincenzo definitely should start getting more minutes. But I don't know. I don't think they're going to do it. I don't think they're going to do it at an all-time all-NBA level and has been leading his that's team in stupid. almost every uh, major yeah, statistical like, category and that's it's also stupid. not his fault that the players around him have been underperforming crazy, like, this season do Jordan right Poole hasn't taken You're the leap that him. we He's all not, expected like, him like, to do like, Clay to Thompson do has clearly regressed and so has Draymond like, so I believe that if you put the right pieces around Steph just like Anthony Davis then the Warriors will definitely jump up in the standings but that's why I have Stephen Curry at 7th now at number 6 we've got Luka Doncic and this will alright Hell no, no, hell no, nah, hell no, you're wilding now, gang, I'm sorry, you're wilding, nah, there's not five better players in the league than Luka, I said before the season, bro, it's only one person that you can really debate better than Luka before the season, I don't think you can really debate that person over Luka anymore, Luka may not be like a defensive player, but he's not a bad defensive player, people try to say he's a bad defensive player, he's just an average defensive player, you know what I'm saying, he's just an average, he just doesn't have the athleticism that people want on the defensive end, but he does, he does play defense. You know what I'm saying? He does. He may not be what you want him to be, but he does. But offensively, it's not a better. All right, the only person you can really argue is Jokic better offensively. But I would go Luka in that aspect. I would say Luka's been the best player in the league this year. Personally, especially when you take into account where his team is ranked and how, what is on his team. Uh, yeah, come on, bro. Like, I don't really put team success into it, but you can literally see the impact with some players like Curry, Luka. You can see it. And even Anthony Davis. That's why I would say Anthony Davis top five because Anthony Davis had the Lakers looking really, really well. They were looking like a, a contender almost for like a week span, bro. They were playing some of the top teams in the league, and that, that was when the top teams was at their hikes. So I don't know, man. I would definitely probably say uh, Luka definitely probably won right now for me. I think AD should be top five. I think Curry should be higher. I don't I don't like how this is going so far at all. I just know I just know already Tatum's gonna be way too high. I know people wanna put him MVP because team success, but I I wouldn't put him I wouldn't put him top five. I wouldn't I wouldn't top five players in the league. I wouldn't. He's definitely about top eight for sure. He's not. He's not top five. Definitely be one of the more controversial rankings of this video. But hear me out. Now, from an individual standpoint, Luka Doncic has easily been one of the best scorers in the league. And you could very well make a strong case that he's been the best scorer in the league. Yes. But my thing right now What's with the, Luka is that it's not affecting winning. I mean, yeah, you have all these nice stats and you've been scoring a lot, but your team has been the sixth to eighth seed for majority of the season. This team not good. What the fuck you want the nigga to do? You want this? You act like this nigga got like... Yeah, like this nigga got like a Jalen Brown or a, like a, a like a well-rounded team around him or something, bro. Like, what are you talking about? Like, like what do you want this nigga to do? You want this nigga to be the Celtics who has probably the most best all-around deepest team in the league? Like, what do you want this nigga to do, bro? Like, his team is just not that crazy. The offense that they're playing is not that crazy. Their defense that they're playing is really pretty. Honestly, their defense is actually kind of decent. I ain't gonna lie. Their defense been for the past two years pretty decent. I can't lie. But offensively and like just what's around him is not really the best and you can say it's because Luca had the ball in his hands and all that 
I, I understand that. But, like, on this team, I can't really say that Luka should get the ball in his hands. It's not really much on his team in terms of creation. Like, Spencer Dinwiddie, like, come on, bro. Like, stop playing, bro. Like, most of the people on this team that are scored, they need a, a person to set them up. They're not, like, actual individual scores. Jalen Bronson was that for them. That's what Jalen Bronson was so important for them for. And I think that the help argument is starting to get a little redundant. You have Christian Wood who's giving you 17 points. <sighs> Man, this is crazy. This is, this is actually crazy. Nigga, we're fighting for Christian Wood, Spencer Dinwiddie. Come on, bro. Christian Wood, I like Christian Wood. But before this season, he was lo looked at as a high stat, low impact type of player. That's what he was looked at as. I like Christian Wood. I think he was a, is an underrated player for sure. He plays defense. He can shoot the ball. He's pretty athletic. But come on, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, come on, bro. Let's be real here. Let's be real here, man. Christian Wood, he, 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 he's a bucket getter. Yeah, he's a bucket getter. He's an underrated bucket getter. But, like, defensively, bro, all he's really good for is a shot blocking. He's not really... A, a guard somebody put him on a big he's gonna lock him down he's not really gonna be able to play multiple positions he's not gonna be a great pick and roll defender he's not he's not he's just a good shot blocker on defense offensively he's gonna be able to shoot the three pick and roll pick and pop he's a good at all of those things no matter who's playing the ball handler but it's gonna be even better with Luca. it's just a fact he's not really a person that's gonna be the craziest creating for himself he can do some step backs but like you let's be honest a team is not really wanting christian wood to be running a iso doing step backs that's not what the team that's not what a team wants spencer dinwiddie he's a very inefficient player but he, when he's on he's on that's a fact like he's the closest thing they have to jalen bronson from last year but they don't have Jalen Brunson from last year. That's just the thing. They, they, they didn't replace that at all. They just kind of came with Christian Wood. Um, he now plays as a starter, but he should have been starting. But, like, they don't really have anything besides, like, four players. They got some good 3 and D players that's kind of inconsistent shooting, but really good defensive players. And they got Christian Wood and Spencer Dinwiddie. That's what the that's what the Mavericks kind of are. I do like um some of your bigs like uh Cle Kleber or something like that. I think that Maxi Kleber. I think that's how you say his name. Um, I, I even mess with Dwight Powell, but to say that they have like the help argument, bro. If you look at Luca team in comparison to a lot of these teams in the West, you're gonna see a lot of the teams with more help. The Clippers, more help. The Warriors, more help. The Nuggets, more help. Like, come on, bro. Like, I, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Like, if you really expect him to be a top four seed, top five seed, and you're making it, you're making it seem like him being a top six seed is a negative, it's crazy. And I think even now he's a, he's at the fourth seed. So I don't even know, bro. I don't know. I don't know. It's a game and is more than capable of getting you over that. Spencer Dinwiddie, who's also averaging 16 points a game, who is also more than capable of getting you over that. Uh, like bro, like what what are you what are you expecting out of Spencer Dinwiddie? Like if you're saying he's capable, like are you saying capable of doing that if he's like the number one option on the team? Like what are you saying? Like 16 points per game as the third option is not bad. That's that's decent. Like what is, what are you arguing? I don't get what you arguing here, bro. And Tim Hardaway is averaging 13, and he's also capable of. Spencer Dinwiddie is not having a good year though. He's also just not having a good year shooting the ball. Like it's just a fact. Like if you ask Mavericks fans about Tim Hardaway, they're not they're not in really like high form with him, man. They don't really love him right now. Like I'm I'm, I'm being honest, bro. Like you really talking about people that really kind of depend on Luca really heavily besides Spencer Dinwiddie to get a lot of their shots off. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. Giving you more than that. So Luka Doncic has more than enough help for someone who in many people's eyes is a top two player in the league right now. To me, this is more than enough to at least get a four seed for a top two player in the league with enough help to only be the sixth to eighth seed for majority of the season. That is saying something. And I'm gonna be honest, break it, breaks in some of this stuff based off where you are after a month. When we know that's nothing, that's nothing, that's not the biggest deal. Like last year, the Bulls was like the top seed in the East for the first month. Like, come on, bro. Like, what are we talking about, bro? Like, what are we talking about? We all know the most important part of the season is around All Star break and towards the end of the year. That's the facts. That's the facts, bro. That's where the around the All Star break is important. That's because that's where a lot of the people start getting injured. Around the end is where you're starting to fight for your seeding really, really hard. That's where the like when you're playing the top teams really matter the most. So, like, the fact that you pushing hard for seeding in the first month is kind of crazy to me. But, I guess. Not to mention that the Mavs are terrible defensively. And one of the main guys who... See, like, see, this nigga's chatting. 
This nigga's chatting. The Mavs are not terrible defensively. They, uh, <laughs> that's a ch that's chatting. That's chatting. Mavs are definitely a great defensive team. Like they he was a great defensive team last year, uh, and they're a great defensive team this year. I don't know what he's talking about. Contributes to that, if not the main guy, is Luka Doncic, and that's saying something. I, I, there's no way you said that bullshit just to say Luka. I like, come on, bro. Stop it, bro. Like, what are we talking about? All right, bro. This nigga pissed me off. Thing as well. Now I'm not using this to bash Luka Doncic at all. Luka Doncic is for sure. Yes, you are. You put him at six because because you said he has help and he doesn't play defense. Like, what are you talking about, bro? What are you talking about? I'm telling you right now, every team in the league, for they star, they will trade Luka. Only person that's arguable is Tatum because they're around the same age and they have really, really, really similar production. And, yeah, Luke, I've, honestly, Celtics, they've got a lot out of Tatum for how young he is already. I think they made... How, I think they made the finals and they made the conference finals three times already. That's the only team that could really argue they would keep their star. Giannis maybe, Jokic maybe, but I don't see anybody else. I don't see anybody else, honestly. A generational talent who will go down as one of the all-time NBA greats. But we have to start holding him accountable for not getting higher in the standings with the complimentary pieces that he had. I mean, bro, like, bro, I'm going to be honest. You're saying complimentary pieces, but if you compare his complimentary pieces to other teams, it's just not like, like, what's the debate, bro? Like, what's the debate? You're, you're taking, you're taking Spencer Dinwiddie and, um, Spencer Dinwiddie and Christian Wood over Michael Porter and Aaron, Aaron Gordon and what's his name? Jamal Murray. Like, come on, bro. Like, come on, bro. Like, what the fuck are we talking about, bro? Like, come on, bro. What are we talking about? Like, what are we talking about, bro? I, 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 like, you're losing me, gang. As, and that's why I have Luka at six. Now, at five, we've got Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant this season has been having one of the best. KD this year is top three. I don't care what you're talking about. Defensively, he's been a top defensor, defender this year. Like, that's not debatable. Like, rim protecting wise, guard, like, going on people, switching on people. KD has been a top defender this year. People don't want to talk about that. Mid-range, nobody's been close. I don't think anybody really been close of a score besides Luka and maybe, like, a couple people. Maybe a couple people. I think people are scoring more, but the way, like, I'm not going to get into that. But, yeah, I think KD definitely should be top three. That's what I'll say. The only thing is, people, bro, people really, like, they not really seeing it. What happened last year is happening again this year where he got hurt around the same time. His team was playing at a phenomenal rate with how he was playing, and now they finna fall in the standings. They gonna play a tough team in the first round, and a team that he gonna be he gonna rush himself back from injury because they fell in standings, and he's not gonna be 100% KD. It's just a fact. Now y'all gonna really fight hard for he's not this, he's not that, but like he is that. Like he he is that. He is that. But. It is what it is, bro. Offensive seasons of his career. And that's scary considering the fact that Kevin Durant is already one of the greatest scorers of all time. He's averaging 30 points a game while shooting a ridiculous 56% from the field. And he's also been having one of the best mid-range shooting seasons of all time. And KD and the Nets as of recently have been the hottest team in the NBA. They've won 11 games out of their last 12 with two wins over the Raptors. A win over the Bucks he should have beat them and a win over the Cavaliers. Especially the way that KD, KD has hurt. been able to affect the game with not only his scoring, but his hurt, defense was, is insane. He was He's having been the best, best scorer season. on this team while simultaneously being one of the best shot blockers as well. Forget he the understands offense. that he has to step up defensively in order for this team to be a contender, and he's done that. So that's why I have KD at five. Now at four, we've really got Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid. I'm not mad at Embiid. I don't think he's been better than... uh. I don't think he's been better than KD or Luka, but honestly, Embiid, bro, deserve, I'm glad Embiid getting love this year because I think last year he kind of had a drop-off defensively. This year he hasn't really been that crazy defensively, but offensively, I think he's been much better <laughs> offensively. Like, he's really been completely unguardable. If y'all thought he was unguardable last year, he's literally unguardable this year. Like, there's nothing you can do with him. So I can't even, I can't even be mad. He's definitely up there in that echelon of, un, like, best offensive players. You could argue with Luka. Uh, KD, that's really on you how you want to go about that. But Embiid, man, I don't know, man. It's not too many teams in the East that want to go against that. I'm going to be honest. Embiid is leading the league in scoring right now and is averaging 34 points a game. Not only has he been leading the league in scoring, but the Sixers have been winning basketball games. I mean, what he's doing is affecting winning. 
when Tyrese Maxey and nobody's talking about him in the MVP race. That's the crazy part at all. Like it's crazy that people were talking about him last year in the MVP race, but this year you don't hear anything about him. Now I will be honest and say, do I think he's the MVP? Nah, I don't. But I do think if you was fighting for him to be MVP last year, like they were, you should be fighting harder this year. But I didn't think he was the MVP last year, so. I'm just consistent with my thoughts. Y'all just not consistent at all with anything y'all do. It's just a fact. And James Harden were out of the lineup. Joel Embiid definitely picked up most of the slack. When they were out, he helped the Sixers get to a top five seed. And that's pretty hard to do considering the lack of talent that he has around him with Tyrese Maxey and James Harden. You know what team I want the uh, 76ers to play in the playoffs? I want them to play the Celtics. I don't want to see them play. I don't want. I honestly don't want to see them play um, or the Nets. The Nets would be a good matchup for them. But I want to see them play the Celtics. Or the Nets, if they can get fully healthy, like, I don't want to see, like, a week before them trying to push for the playoffs. I want to see them a full month fully healthy before, if they play the Nets. But really want to see them play the Celtics. I want to see the 76ers and the Celtics. That's a very interesting matchup to me. Now, I do think the Celtics will easily win that series, but I want to see that. I do want to see that. Now, um, I don't want to see them play the uh, Bucks though. I, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see them really play, like, a... a a team like that at all Harden out of the lineup and that's why I haven't beat at four in that number three we've got Nikola Jokic and as crazy as it sounds Nikola Jokic may win his third straight and what the hell Jokic three who the fuck is top two who the fuck is top two I thought it was gonna be Jokic and uh Giannis I don't think those are the top two players by the way but based on how this list was going, I felt like that's where it was going. Who the hell is going to be top two on this list? MVP. He's averaging 25, 11, and 9. And the Nuggets are tied for the first seed in the West right now. And the Nuggets have the second best offense in the league with the 116 offensive rating. To me, Jokic has the stats, the performances, and the team success to be this high. And to be honest, it really wouldn't surprise me if he got another MVP. And he's also... Like, nah, no cap. This is how you know they change the narratives every year. I felt like Jokic, out of those three players, I felt like Giannis deserved it. Then it was Jokic. But if you took into the account that Jokic was playing without his two best players for the whole season, and he was still pretty much the same record as Giannis and Embiid with much better stats, then I could understand the Jokic. But this year, he has even better stats and... His team is the number one team in the West, but you don't really hear people fighting as hard for the uh, MVP. Like, it's crazy. I don't know, man. Y'all be y'all be switching that. This nigga's finna have Tatum top two. Alright, bro. Alright, bro. Alright, bro. Alright, bro. Right, bro. Alright, bro. You got it, bro. Now, nah, you got it. Nigga. The Dick Sucker Award of the year goes to you, gang. You got it. You got it, bro. You got it. You deserve it, bro. You deserve it. You deserve it, gay. You deserve it. You deserve it. I was scared you was going to have LeBron here, but this might be worse. Nah, that's cap. Nah, Tatum is better than LeBron, um, but I ain't going to lie. <laughs> Tatum, too, is crazy, bro. Tatum is in that Ja Morant, Donovan Mitchell area. I right, only reason you have, like, what, what's the, okay, I want to understand this. Is, uh, Jason Tatum is a better player than Ja Morant. He is. He's a better player than Ja Morant. So I can't, I really don't, I really understand you having him over John Morant. But if you're taking it based off team success, the Grizzlies have been a top team in the league too. Now the Celtics have been the best team in the league, but they also are the best team in the league when it comes to depth, when it comes to like duo, you could argue they have the best duo in the league. You could also, you could argue they have the best depth in the league. You could also argue they have the best starting lineup in the league. Like you can also argue they have the best bench in the league. You can argue also they have the best defensive team in the league. You can also argue they have the best shooting team in the league. Like, the Celtics are stacked. So, like, I don't really understand how you discounting Luka. I guess you you said Luka has a good team, so I don't know. I don't know. I guess. Oh, and Tatum was the best player in all of those games. Was Tatum the best player in all those games? Or am I tripping? Was Tatum actually the best player in all those games? Bro, when they when they played the Nuggets, didn't both didn't both him and Jalen Brown both have thirty five? See, this is what I'm saying, bro. This is what I'm saying, bro. This is what I'm saying. Like you can't big up, you can't big up a, a players, a, like Luca. You try, you literally bigged up all his his supporting cast 
But you're literally saying Tatum was the best player on the court where Jokic went crazy in this game, but he couldn't match two players having the same production as him. Jalen Brown is just as good as Jason Tatum. So y'all just really try to make Jalen Brown act like he's not as good. But he is. He literally is. <laughs> I don't get it, bro. I, I don't get it, bro. I, I don't get it. I genuinely don't get it. Like, y'all really act like Jalen Brown is not like that. Y'all really do. Y'all for real do, bro. Jalen Brown is like that. Is he better than Jalen, Jason Tatum? I, I mean, that's an argument for another day. But I think Jason Tatum, bro, I think he's a top eight player in the league for sure. But to say that he's outplaying all these other players, just be, like they're beating these other teams just because he's better than the other players, like that's fucking crazy, nigga. That's crazy. That's, 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 that's a crazy argument, bro. That's a crazy argument, bro. So that's why I have Jason Tatum as the second best player in the league. And at number one, we've got Giannis Antetokounmpo. Giannis is... I think Giannis top two, top three this year. I do. But he just, like, offensively, like his, his outside, the like around the circle area his offense has not been good at all at all like if you watch the bucks bro his shooting ability is very very bad this year like he if he's not getting to the rim it's really really tough basketball for him um he's getting a lot more free throws this year i will say that but like nah bro i'm not really messing with Giannis' offense this year passing wise yeah he's been straight defensively he's Giannis, but i'm not really messing with his basketball game right now outside outside the rim right now He's still been dominant around the rim, but everything else, not that good. So, I don't know. 32 points a game, which is good for third in the league. He's leading the league in field goals made at 11. He's leading the league in defense, and that's why. I think, though, if Giannis can really, like, it's like, if he, if, since he's not being as good inside the, like, as good outside, like, the, around the rim, if he, like, doubles down on just getting to the rim, because he's getting way more fouls than ever. He could definitely you he he could definitely just stay the best player for sure, but I think he's taking a little bit too many shots outside around the rim for him to still be the best player in my opinion. But I can't really argue it. I like Giannis a lot. I think Giannis definitely should, he. I'm not gonna argue somebody that said he is the best. I just don't think he. I think he's. I think he's either one, two, or three in the league. Now, if you made it this far into the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'm on the road to a thousand subscribers, I Luca, and I KD, can't do that without Yoki, you guys. If you year. like the content and have video ideas, make sure to leave it down below in the comment section. All That's of my social saying. media links will be down below in the description as well. I will be doing podcasts on this channel once a week, so stay on the lookout for that. More videos just like this one on the way soon. And as always, I'm out. Peace. Very, very crazy list. It started off crazy. We have an 80 at 10 and then saying John Moran and Donovan Mitchell are better. Then we saw Curry at 7, which is insane. Then we saw Luka at 6. Then we kind of started getting a little bit better. I think KD is a top 3 player, but that's okay. Um, and B, 4, I'm not mad at that. Jokic, 3, I'm not mad at that. Then we had Luka as a two, top 2 player in the NBA, which is insane. I don't know what's up with it, bro, but people... I think I think Tatum going. I can't say that, but yeah, I think I think people are going to really un overrate Tatum for a, a large part of his career because of team success, really. Because he's not better than a lot of these players. Like, he's not. He's just not. I don't know. He's just not. Like, I don't know. But yeah, I guess if you just talking about this year, is he debatably a top five player? Yeah, debatably he is a top five player. You could debate that. Top two though? Nah. Now I can't I can't be too mad if you said he was just a, a number five. No, I can't be too mad at that if you said he was top five. But top two, I can't. I'm not. I'm not hearing that one. I'm not. But yeah, that's gonna be in this video. If you guys haven't already liked the video, subscribe if you're new. Without further ado, more man, we got more videos coming on the channel. But yeah, it's your boy Fist and I'm out to be man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah! How is D Book not on this list? D Book without bro, the Suns without D Book. Have been horrible. Oh yeah, now nah, they wildin'. Now nah, they wildin', they wildin', they wildin'.